I knew this guy who was so overweight his telephone number was the pound sign. He worked at a candy factory. He had to put the M&Ms into alphabetical order. One time in New York City, he got run over by a taxi cab. The police asked him, did you get the license number of the car that hit you? And he said, no, but I'll never forget his laugh. There's a young guy, he's in college. He decides to go to a singles bar. Walks into the bar, he sees pretty crowded and uh, he notices there's a pretty girl sitting right at the bar so he walks over to the bar he takes a stool next to hers and he says hello could I buy you a drink and she says go to bed with you and she slaps his face and then she walks to the other end of the bar the guy says wow she must have misunderstood me maybe I wasn't speaking too clearly I should go down there and explain that all I want to do is buy her a drink. So he goes down to the end of the bar where she's sitting and he says, I'm sorry, I must not have been speaking clearly. I, I just wanted to see if I could buy you a drink. And she says, go to bed with you. And she slaps his face again. And he's real embarrassed. He sees everybody's looking at him. He walks to the other end of the bar. Says she, she just must not have good hearing or something. I, just don't know what's going on and just then the girl gets up from the end of the bar and she walks over to the young guy and she says I'm sorry I was uh, very rude to you but I'm doing an experiment this is for a college class I'm in I'm supposed to do a study about how people act when they're embarrassed and I was using you as a subject and she says I hope you will forgive me and the guy says twenty dollars a few things that Samuel Goldwyn said, he said, I prefer a smart idiot over a stupid genius. Samuel Goldwyn said, a bachelor's life is no life for a single man. When asked about color TV, Samuel Goldwyn said, I'll believe it when I see it in black and white. Samuel Goldwyn said, I pay no attention to the critics, I don't even ignore them. Samuel Goldwyn said, if I could drop dead now, I'd be the happiest man alive. Samuel Goldwyn said, I had a monumental idea this morning, but I didn't like it. There's a small hot dog stand inside the Eiffel Tower. The guy is eating his lunch there. The waitress comes over to him and she says, pardon me, I understand you've been eating your lunch right here, the same spot, for 40 years every day of the year, 365 days a year, you eat your lunch right here at the same spot inside the Eiffel Tower. You must really love the Eiffel Tower. And the guy says, I hate the Eiffel Tower. This is the only place in all of Paris where I can eat my lunch without having to look at the Eiffel Tower. A guy stops at a general store in a small town Walks inside, he notices the shelves have salt on them. The shelves in the back, the shelves in the front. Lots and lots of salt. There's salt on the shelves on the sides of the store. And barrels of salt on the floor. He sees the owner. He says, wow, you must really be a great salt salesman. I've never seen so much salt. You must really know a lot about selling salt. The guy says, me? No. I don't know much about selling salt. I might sell a carton or two a month. But the guy who sold me the salt, boy, could he sell salt. Yogi Berra said that Little League Baseball is good because it keeps the parents off the streets. Yogi Berra said you can observe a lot of things by just watching. Yogi Berra said baseball is 90% mental and the other half is physical. Yogi Berra said, in theory, there's no difference between theory and practice. But in practice, there is a difference. Yogi Berra said, if you don't know where you're going, you might wind up someplace else. Yogi Berra said, I wish I had an answer for that question because I'm tired of answering that question. I noticed I was gaining some weight and I was developing uh, sort of a second chin there. 
I thought, wow, you know, if this uh, keeps up, then I'm going to uh, lose my youthful appearance. So I talked to a friend about it, and he said, well, try this exercise. This is a good exercise. Take your fingers and hit the chin like that three times a day for five minutes. Do that. And I tried it, and it worked. I mean, just look how thin my fingers are getting. There's this guy walked into a tailor shop, said, I want to get a suit made to measure. I want to get a suit that really fits well. And the tailor says, okay, I'll take care of you. I'll get it all fixed up. And he measures the guy, measures everything, and he makes a suit, and the guy tries on the suit. And the guy said, wow, this suit looks really, really great, looking in the mirror. But this right sleeve, a little bit long, the right sleeve just a little bit long. The tailor says, well, what you do, you lean into the right sleeve. You lean down into it, and your hand comes out down there, and it fits really nice. And the guy looks in the mirror, yeah, yeah, that's good. But, but look, there's a, a wrinkle up here in my shoulder uh, when I lean down like that. And the tailor says, well, what you do, you pull your shoulder back. That takes up that room there. It takes up the slack. Pull your shoulder back. And you lean down, you pull your shoulder back. I said, yeah, that looks nice, but wait a minute. Uh, the cuff of my pants now, it uh, looks like it's uh, a little bit too high. It uh, should be lower. And the guy says, well, what you do is you use your tiptoe. Step up on your tiptoe like that. Pull your shoulder back. Push your arm down. Yeah. The guy looks in the mirror. Says, yeah, that looks pretty good, but the, the uh, lapel here seems to be out of shape. And the guy says, well, you twist around like this while you're pulling your shoulder back, pushing your arm down, and stepping on your tiptoe. The guy looks in the mirror and says, oh, yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. He pays the tailor. He walks out of the store, walking along, walks down the street. Two ladies pass him. One lady says, oh, did you see that poor handicapped man who just walked by. The other lady said, yeah, but did you notice how well his suit fit? When I was a little boy, about seven years old, my dad took me out to the middle of the lake in a little boat. He said, I'm going to throw you into the water, and the only way you get back to shore is if you swim. That's uh, the way my dad taught me how to swim. He took me out to the middle of the lake, and he threw me into the water. I said, Dad, he wasn't trying to teach you how to swim. 